Hello, welcome to Red Alert 3. We have Amaranth as the Soviets being blue, and we have Classic, Classic No, I think, as the Allies who are orange. If they were red, this would be really confusing. <laughs> it would pretty much be backwards. So, both factions are start. Well, this faction is starting off with walls here and a refinery there, so. Looks like we've got some dogs and bears on the field already. And it looks like they're setting up their walls before their refineries. So eco-wise, Amaranth is actually ahead in this game. But Classic Mo has more units on the field. It looks like he's got an engineer who's going for the oil derrick up here. And Amaranth is a bit behind on that. We've got action over that. So he's taking Garrison in that building and the dog is going for a swim. And it looks like he's going to come across two units here and there's a bear that's just popped out of the barracks already. Eco-wise it looks like Classic Nose caught up. And he has his refineries on the field. Setting up a black gun there. So he's expecting our units which is quite common from allied players. Over here we've got a dog who is scouting out the enemy. Trying to see if he's expanding anywhere. And it looks like we finally have the engineer from Amaranth to collect this oil rig. There is a scout right in the base of the allied player. And he already has an airfield actually set up right next to this oil rig. and uh, Not oil rig, the oil ore mine. And the MCV is probably going to just move forward to try and claim this area to have a refinery there too. Air units are on the field, so that flat gun is a fair prediction. He's got a line of flat units as well, so that is a good play from Amaranth. Dogs and bears are trying to fight it out, and the dog just killed a bear. The bear managed to use his roar to stun the dog, and now he's taken out the dog. And the Soviets moved their MCV-2 to get an expanse over here, so that's more of a defensive way to play. He's gone back on the map, whereas this guy, Classic No, has gone forward. So he's playing offensively at this present moment in time. We've got the ore refinery on the field, and we seem to have two bombers roaming the map somewhere. They've come back, so they were going this way. Are they taking on the oil rig? No, they're just probably having a look around. Those flat guys are coming forward. He's built some walls up here. Try and help stop them, but I don't know how effective that is. I think they might be able to go around. No, I don't, I don't know if they can. I don't think they can. But they can easily just blow it down. Which is what they're going to do. Also, I've just noticed there is... He could use this to shoot this down. I don't know if he plans to try and capture it instead. The, the Vindicator just got taken out. One's on half health, but it's going to get its repairs. It's literally just trying to build walls to block off the enemy. And I was right, he's going to just try and shoot it down. He's not going to try and capture that. He's going to just try and take it out. The Vindicator is trying to take on some bears. And it looks like he's 5 3 there, so that means he's got the air superiority power. But those bears are actually causing splash damage onto his own MCV. The Vindicator is killing the bears right next to it. It's giving off some free damage for Amaranth. There we go. There's a bear that just got taken out in the water there from this garrison. What's going on? Okay, it's still there. That's fine. Still trying to shoot that down. So about half health now. We've got some twin blades on the field now. They're going to pick up some units. They're going to drop some off at his base or some other key location. I keep getting triggered by that from my old times of playing. I'm going to follow that twin blade. He's coming around this way. So it looks like he's going to try and get him from the back of the base. Or it might just be to support this area. We'll have to find out. There we go. What's going on over here? Now we've got some a dogfight going on here. We've got two MiGs against this unit that I've actually forgotten the name of. The Apollo Fighter, that's it. There we go. He's dropped off those flat units to try and take out this structure. It looks like it's going to be successful. He is gone, so that was some great eco damage there. And now to take out the Vindicator, he's brought his own MiGs into there. He 
pretty good way of taking them out. We have a sub pen being built here from Plastic No. So he's placed his construction yard a lot closer now. But that is in range of this guy who's got his ability on. So that is going to take damage really fast. And the Tesla coil will hopefully take him out for... Took that one out instead. But the Vindicators are coming in taking a lot of damage in this little location here. And we've got the bears coming in to deal with these units on the ground. And the Vindicators are going to get challenged by these MIG fighters. And it looks like they can just hover over that area almost. They are forced back from this IFV. I'm really trying to remember the names. It's been a long time since I played Command and Conquer, but they're going to come in with the Twin Blades. And a Cryo Freeze has been placed here to stop this barracks from being too much hassle. And we got the support drop there from the satellites. But these units are probably going to take this sub pen out. There it goes, but it looks like he's going to build another one instead. So he's going to place one just there, just out of range of those infantry. But if they come around this side, he'll probably be able to reach that. And we have Classic No bringing back his MCV. Actually, I think that's Amaranth. Yeah, that's Amaranth. Sorry. So he's bringing back his MCV. He knows he can't hold that area. It looks like he did lose this sub pen. Got a bit of an air force going on around here. Trying to protect anything and keep an eye on this choke point. We do have an infantry force against this wall. They are going to try and take it down again. <coughs> there we go. They're taking down pretty much everything. They're not going to leave anything standing there, I think. He has stopped. He's made a big gap here. He might go around. This is a lightly defended MCV as well. Looks like we had some twin blade action going on there. So he's bringing his infantry through here. He's got some air units coming around here. It looks like he's got some damage going on here. He's protecting this one unit to take out this uh, harvester. He's got the MIGs there to try and protect them if any Apollos come in, which they have done. But there is more than them, so they are going to draw them back. Over here, the infantry did attack, but it looks like they were forced out. So he's just bringing those units back. The Apollo fighters were chasing down the Twin Blades and did take them out. Or it might have been the MiGs. I'm pretty sure it's the Twin Blades. It's still got three. He's rebuilding his walls over here. Which is just kind of wasting his money. In the minute, I mean, wars are cheap, so this isn't that bad of an idea to help slow down those infantry. But the infantry are already there. They're just going to destroy them as soon as they're on the field. And I've just noticed we have the expanse on both players in the back end of the base. Back end of the map. The infantry are just draining the cash of Classico. Classic now. And the MCV is being brought back onto the field. And the MiGs and the... Twin Blades are coming back to this location. I think they're going to try and take him out there. Or they have retreated to protect the MCB by the looks of things. Feels like a bit of indecisiveness coming from Amaranth. He's placed... Classico now has placed an anti-air gun in the water here. But that is quickly dispatched with and he has taken on his ore miner there. So... That should increase his eco, but I think Classic No, no. <coughs> is probably a bit ahead because he has his oil rigs up and running for a lot longer. But the other side of it is he doesn't have his oil rig placed anymore because Amaranth has taken that out. We've got these infantry with the Molokov cocktails. I hope I pronounced that right. And they tried to take on that, but it doesn't look like they managed to take it all out. To get another one in there which takes out an infantry instantly he's changed out this one so he's put one of these peacekeepers in there and that has changed it to an anti-infantry gunner over on this side we've got the migs just hanging around there and there are four migs now so we are going to need to see some larger plays from uh, from air units from 
classic now. And Amaranth is putting on the pressure in the center of this map on the choke point right here. And it looks like they are pushing back. Classic now. Over here, most of the units were distracted trying to deal with this air force. The MiGs have managed to escape, but they are going to get shot at once again. One more goes down. And over in the center, they are back into a bit of a stalemate. They've got both their units on the front line here. And Amaranth is building a lot of barracks to try and take on these IFEs. Which is a lot of anti-air from Classic now. But the air units do keep coming. But it is the infantry that are winning this game at the minute. Over in the centre of the map. For Amaranth. And he has three barracks now in the centre. I'm not sure what happened there. I saw that get built and then he just sold it immediately. I have to figure that one out. If you know why he did that, it might have just been a misclick. But if you know, please let me know. Maybe you know something I don't. So, Classic No has been pushed back, and Amaranth is putting the pressure on here. Doing a little scout with his infantry, because he can't really see what's going on there. And we have the Air Force coming in from the other side. He's going to try and take out the back end of the base. This unprotected ore miner right now. Over here, he has spotted this. He is sending his Apollo fighters that way. And the MiGs are going to engage, because they've probably seen that coming, so he's... Got the MiGs trying to take out the Apollos. They took a lot of damage there on both sides. Something's been left here. There's a bear just randomly in the water there. Why not? Just going for a little swim. <coughs> Doing some infantry scouts. And we have another satellite drop going on right there. But he sold his structure, I think. Let's try and save that. Regain some capital on that. Got some big movements over here. Fast movements. And these twin blades are trying to find any weak point they can take advantage of. And at the minute, with lack of power, it might actually be successful. Over here, it looks like he's trying to work on his power. He's got power back. These twin blades are going to come in just the wrong time, which is unfortunate for him. He is still keeping some units there. The MiGs are just staying there. That's fine. I'm right, bringing those back now. Where are the Apollos going? Yeah. I assume they were Apollos because of their speed. We do have some damage going on here. So, <laughs> Amaranth has just placed an ore refinery here. Just trying to get some eco in. But the Athena cannon has taken that out pretty fast. Now with some artillery, it looks like... Classic, no, might be able to take out or put the pressure back on in this area here. Might be able to push back Amaranth. Knowing this, Amaranth has rem uh, removed the MCV from the area. He's trying to bring that back. They are going to take out the sub pen, which I've just noticed. They've <laughs> these hammer tanks have taken out the bridge there. And the Athena cannons were successful at taking out that sub pen. I've spotted this battle going on here. He's taking out the eco once again with the twin blades. He's going to go for the refinery now while he can. The Apollos might be coming in, I think. He's getting prepared to. But they've also dropped some units on the ground for anti-air. They're not firing, so they're waiting for something that can attack back. Cryocopters have been brought in to try and freeze these little guys. There you go, the mix have been removed by the Apollos. All Apollos survived that attack. And they are going to chase away the Twin Blades. Down here, those guys are going to pop from being frozen. <coughs> and the Twin Blades cannot escape these Apollo fighters. And they all end up going down. The Athena cannons are moving forward. And now they're retreating. He decides not to go for this. We have a Kirov on the field right now. 
That is a sizable force in this game right now. Looks like we are preparing to have one big battle. To see who could be the winner of this game. So this is classic now. Having two Athena cannons, four IF-5, 6, 7, 8, IVFs, cryocopters, guardians, and a few infantry on the ground. He's using his Athena cannons to try and take out the artillery of Amaranth, who is using the V-4 rocket launchers. I am surprised I haven't seen any terror drones in this game, though, because they're usually quite an optimum choice for Soviet players. We have some more artillery coming out now. we got some dreadnoughts. And those dreadnoughts have great range and high damage, but they're very weak against air units. <laughs> and he's been shrunk. <laughs> you got to love Red Alert 3, didn't you? <laughs> we have a lot of movements from each player, both wanting to progress, but neither one willing to commit to the fight. Kind of testing out each other's artillery at the minute, and the cryocopters are going to come in and shrink those little guys down. And it looks like he's going to move in straight after that to try and take them out. Or he's going to retreat. Going to hold his ground there instead. The I... What's this one called? I was going to say Hydra. Uh, that's Hydrofoil. The Hydrofoil are going to try and take out some of the air units here. <coughs> there go. The Athena cannons are moving in once again. They're going to get shot by one of the artillerists. Each taking out one artillery of each other. And the Athena cannon is going to go straight for this factory here, the ore miner. The Kirovs are way out of position right now, and one is taking heavy damage from these IVFs. And there's an aircraft carrier on the field. This is a great weapon as well for artillery-like attacks. And we have a terror drone here that has immobilized it. Instead of trying to infect it, he's immobilized it. This that was a really quick succession of attacks on that aircraft carrier. Kirov positioned out of place again. The Athena cannon's going for that dreadnought while it shrunk. Amaranth is confident they can secure this location by building that refinery there once again. And it looks like this cryo shock is going to separate some units out there. And they are going to get taken out by Amaranth as he and uh, by Classic No, as he takes out some of those stray units. And just at this part, we have some back end action. There is a sub trying to take out this refinery. I say trying; he's very successful. He's taking it out. And this sub here is trying to take this out before any more aircraft carriers can come out. And at the same time, these dreadnoughts keep getting shrunk before they can do anything. There's another Kirov being led out into the open, and it's taking a lot of damage. But he has two on heavy damage, one half health. And these two are probably going to go down right now. There we go, we've got one left, but it looks like they are being followed up by some units. I think Classic No is taking the advantage right now by reverse moving his units. Not allowing those Kirovs to get into range. And that is a big loss for Amaranth right now. On the other hand, Amaranth is being harassed with the eco by this one submarine with just that tiny little bit of health left. And these artillery are going to take that guy out quite easily. And the spread damage is going to help kill these infantry, but they're not going to be very effective against the Athena cannons. He managed to destroy this once again with that submarine. It's now going to try and run away. It looks like Classic No knows about that submarine. He's going to bring out another another one of these guys to try and take it, I think. He's got two here already, so I don't think he really needs to send that one there. It's just going to get taken out by that submarine, quite potentially. <coughs> we still have both players amassing quite a large army in the centre, but not willing to commit to the fight, not entirely. Seems to be a bit of a to and fro battle, undecided on 
who is going to continue this fight, but unfortunately, I think Classic No, although he's taking good trades in the fighting going on up here, recently anyway, is really struggling with their eco. They've lost this section, they've got the two original starting ones, and they've still got this one, but it is under attack from a heroic submarine there. And now the pressure is being applied once again. We've got three artillery now, Kirov's twin blades in the air once again with the MiGs, trying to find their weak points in there. Classic No seems to be on the defense for the entirety of this game, apart from right at the beginning. They were trying to be offensive a bit. And it looks like the defensive plays were successful. Twin Blades scouting this area, finding nothing there to attack. It's probably giving Amaranth the confidence they need to potentially push, for push forward later. We have a Dreadnought there that's been shrunk once again. He's got sub pens on both sides here, but this Dreadnought is open to attack whatever he pleases. They're using the shield to try and block the artillery shrapnel coming from these guys. But it is quite a large force in this area. That does look quite cool, to be fair, with a shield coming over it. And it's being blocked by these things. But there is the Dreadnoughts attacking from both sides. Well, not so much anymore. And the artillery from over here, which is putting a lot of pressure on any forces coming through this ground here. The cryo freeze is coming down right in the middle of the battle there. He's going to take out a lot of units that are frozen. If he can get in there quick, he can take out most of these with relative ease. And he'll pretty much one-shot them. If he doesn't hurry up, they're not going to be frozen for much longer, but it is being defended in this location quite heavily. It looks like the Dreadnoughts have been taken out. And that was a very good trade for Classic No. Even this late in the game, he's struggling with his eco, but he is making up for it with the trades he's making on the field. And that submarine is being a pest once again. But it's a different one because he's not heroic anymore. It must have been taken out and a new one's replaced it. And over here, the Athena cannons are trying to outrange anything they can see. But there are some artillery left on the field right now. It looks like Amaranth is going to try and advance here, take out this Athena Cannon if they can. It is a heroic Athena Cannon. So they are going to do a lot of damage, and if he can't take it out, it will heal itself. He's got two heroic Athena Cannons, I've noticed. Three. There's a lot of heroic units in this section of the map. That MCV has the pressure put on it. He has he is gonna have to retreat right now. And although uh, progress is being made for the center of this map, this is still an eco problem for Classic No. He has lost this section again. This MCV has a lot of pressure on it right now, and it looks like it's just been shrunk by one of the cryo choppers, and there is a lot of damage being output here, and he needs to try and take this out as quick as he possibly can. I think he's just going to end up leaving it by the looks of things. It is going to try and make it through. He's moved the MCV forward by mistake. He's taken out the crane. But I think those Athena cannons are going to get taken out by one heroic hammer tank. Classic No has been defeated. I think he just simply ran out of eco. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to subscribe. And there are two videos on screen right now. We could take a look at the graph here. It looks like the Iron Curtain was built there. And I didn't see it get used. Structure-wise, it looks fairly simple. Both equal. Resources are something I like to see. So as you can see, the orange bar was lower. That was because of the harassment tactics from Mararan. Yeah, so that was a pretty good match, I think. I hope you guys agree. Let me know what you think either player could have done better. I'll see you next time. I'll see you in one of those videos, actually. There are two videos on screen right now. I don't know if they appeared when I first said it, because I forgot about the graphs. Thank you for watching. I'll see you there.